Welcome today to the Hobo and his missing girlfriend podcast. A little special friend here. Going to help me out a little bit. Delete, 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 delete. Obsolete. Obsolete. Yeah, you're a great help there, Chispa. What about your nap? Fix your bed. There we go. Uh, again, this is the Raw Podcast. Today, again, my name is Hobo Tom. And my girlfriend, again, at work. Very busy. Uh, today, we're going, going to review Raw. Again, I'm trying to get these videos up as quickly as I can, especially if I'm don't have anything else better to do. Um, so we're going to start off the show, which was actually pretty good. It was started with a card angle promo. I got to give props to the fan that made this the sign, I like JoJo. I don't know why. Whatever. He, he comes up by saying, I have some bad news. And of course, that's always reminiscent of bad news, Barrett. I have bad news for you. Um, the th <laughs> the funny thing about this promo is when Kurt Angle said Roman Reigns has been suspended and cannot be here today. Crowd cheered. Crowd is not that hot for whatever reason. As soon as he came to the ring. It cheered a little bit only because he's played the defiant character. Other than that, when he started to talk, they booed. It was near vicious. Um, during the Brock promo, when the cops showed up to take him away, the, the crowds cheered. Which is always kind of funny, I guess. It's like, this is your hero. You don't want the cops to take him away, especially when they're U.S. Marshals. First of all, if they're U.S. Marshals, they would have beaten him. Um, they don't play when... So it's like, yeah, thank you, local announcement talent, for dressing up with U.S. Marshal jackets. Time to hand handcuff Roman Reigns. And he did get booed when he was handcuffed. And then... You hear Brock's music hit and beat Roman Reigns who was handcuffed. And fans actually started to cheer for Brock Lesnar. One of the, the this was a vicious crowd. And I'll go on more through that throughout the show, but when Roman Reigns was handcuffed, you hear the chant of you deserve it. And then Brock just beat him with a chair, gave him a couple German suplexes and an FI while handcuffed. And then they got him on the, on the stretcher. And Brock was cursing a lot. I heard the, the, the bitch word used, the B word, because my girlfriend does not like that word. I better not use that word too much. But it was, what is it called? The, the, the B word for now. Uh, you could hear that, and then you could hear the whole audio go blank, and it's like, oh, we said something a little bit more than that. Again, it was pretty good. Went went to commercial, and this, this was pretty long. All these promos took a while. There were good quality of matches. I think the other thing that kind of got to me is that there were a lot of recaps that seemed to take up most of the show. But that led again to the Asuka versus Bliss. Um, Bliss is good. She cuts a heel, good heel promo as the crowd chant, chanting and cheering and then booing her all of a sudden. So, I mean, she's doing pretty good. For, the, for this match, it's a good match. I think the one thing that, that kind of killed it for me was that there's so many commercials run through the matches it kind of kills the action for the viewer and i'm sure the in-ring products is great but at home God, this is like the second set of commercials we're going through it's like blah um the one big thing 
I will give Alexa Bliss props for it. She hit a Lucha Destroyer, very similar to Canadian Destroyer, but it's more like a power bomb. Again, really good. Um, I guess the only bad thing about this, it was kind of that dusty finish. Alexa Bliss said, said ah, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And, and, and she took the 10, 10, 10 count. So Oscar won, which is Shriek Lives. Nia Jax came out looking to get a little revenge on Alexa Bliss. Chased her around, got followed into the gorilla position. Again, it's kind of neat that someone was a shoot because you see the whole production people there just staring down at their computers. And then they just run through. Holy, what happened? I want to say that's not in the script, but sometimes you never know. Uh, this sets up. The Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax at WrestleMania. And I think the WrestleMania card is almost set by now. And kind of a ham sandwich. Having the count out was like, eh, whatever. And Braun came. Wow, he is great. Great timing with the crowd. Um, again, it'll be interesting to see who his WrestleMania partner is. Then there was a little, again, commercial break. But before that, they talked about the ultimate deletion. And this is like the one thing I was waiting for because this could really save this whole show. And they just kind of teased everything throughout the show, which was kind of good. They they did a more so commercial break instead of in between segments. Kind of went better. Um, again, the set up a match with Sheamus and Cesaro. Cesaro was good. It was just. Just an elongated squash match. I mean, Cesaro's, he can sell. Not that bright, though, going through the match neutralizer twice with such a big guy. But hey, it was what it was. Really ham sandwich. It's hard to say they can do anything bad. It wasn't anything great. It'll, it'll still be interesting to see what Braun does for WrestleMania, especially who his partner's going to be. A lot of speculation there, out there. Who, who could it be? Again, feel free to comment who you want as Braun's tag team partner. It would be neat to see a whole bunch of people. I don't know. I'll make those closer to WrestleMania because I just realized it's about three weeks away. I thought it was a lot closer for some reason. Then you had, again, you had the Ultimate Deletion promo. Then you have the double jobber entrance for Titus Worldwide and the Revival. And it's kind of annoying that the Revival are getting like a jobber entrance. I don't know. It is what it was. This was a can of suit match. Really short. And I think the commercials played into it too much. Then can of suit match. Revival won. It, it, it was always fun to see the tandem moves, especially from the Revival. Next thing there was the Mark Henry WWE Hall of Fame video. And pretty good. From there, we have Absolution versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. I think Bailey's going to go heel. She had the black wrist tape on. Generally, heels wear white. I'm sorry, faces wear white. Heels wear black. I think she might actually turn on Sasha Banks, and Sasha Banks is going to be the face. Again, a great thing for debate in the comments section. So, again, leave those comments, folks. Sasha wore her Wonder Woman's outfit. I guess that's good. I think one of the funny points in this match, you saw a Steve here and Larson face being held up by some of the crowd, and again, very iconic hair on the on the YouTube channels. So just want to give them their little cheap pop. Again, going in raw. And I hope they don't yell at me for promoting their product without better say so. But I've been watching it for a while and kind of inspired me to do this a little bit. Again, it was a good match. They, fast, they, they, they faced Absolution of Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. So, <laughs> so Sonya Deville has to work on her outfits a little bit because during a pin little gladiator skirt fell down and it was a cradle position and you could practically see yeah down there 
So it was a little, if you get my meaning. Again, overall, it was a again, ham sandwich mash. It's not not great. It does set the stage for Bailey and Sasha Banks match, which will probably happen the next pay per view after WrestleMania. I don't know what that is offhand. From there, you had a Cena promo. I've never been a biggest fan of Cena. Again, I remember him as the professor of Fogonomics. And that, that whole shtick, and it just kind of got old. And he said that guy, 16-time world champion. I'm like, like really? Like, you're not Ric Flair? Not any of the really great wrestlers. He's a very, don't, don't get me wrong, he's a very, very good wrestler, and I can never do what he did. At least to the level of what he did. All the way, I did once hit a moonsault. That's a, that's a story for another day. But uh, doesn't do it for me. Kane came out. He he called up the Undertaker. Kane came out. I guess held up his brother's honor. Match set up for next week. Whatever. I just don't know why that he's calling out Undertaker. I mean. Hip surgery. My grandfather had hip surgery, and then he gave us a, his boat. Hip surgery is not something you want, really want to mess with. The next match, again, this was the cheeseburger match. The matches are getting better as the card goes on, which was really good. Because if not, I could have fallen asleep. Because it just seemed really long. And I think it's, I was waiting for the ultimate deletion. So you had the Miz Taraj and the Miz versus the Ballard Club. <laughs> The best thing is, is that Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows came out in OGBC shirt. And probably in WWS, that's the old school gangsta Balor Club shirt. But again, it could, again, I, I it shows my age. I still remember them as the Bullet Club. And when I see BC, I always think of Bullet Club first. Again, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. I mean, The Miz is good. Anderson's great. Valor's good. Oh, at the very beginning of the match, the, it's a, the Miz is so good at the shoot interviews. And I don't know if he's given a script or just or they just trust him enough to say, go there and say, say something. But, but he called him Tyler Black and Prince Devitt from, from their indie days. And it was, again, just fun. It's just nice to hear Russ kind of reference the past a little bit. Again, the Ballard Club came out in their black. I think when Finn comes out with the Ballard, with the Ballard Club or Bullet Club guys, he has to wear black, not the blue. The blue looks a little weird. Again, what was a good match? Again, my only real wrestled before so i know what they're capable of and they keep on making them look weak for whatever reason i don't know got another promotion now now you had skill scarred the dilapidated boat on the lake of reincarnation again fun it sets really sets things up then you had a ronda rousey promo and that was that was good we had another tease for the ultimate deletion, and somewhere in here they had a Mark Henry Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame thing. I think I might have mentioned that before. But again, you had the Vanguard one, a holograph inviting Bray Wyatt to enter and listen to the music. You shall find your path. And yeah, it was fun. It was a flaming yawn. And not so much the wrestling was great, but it was entertaining. I felt happy. Much, much that man. It, it, it entertained me. It put a smile on my face. Hey, that's that's, that's what wrestling is supposed to do. It, it's it's taking in the, really the theater of the absurd, and it's just combining everything. Um, they had their great spots. They had the fireworks spot. Again, that looks like something me and my friends would pull off, like shooting firework bazookas at each other while hiding behind sheds or using a garbage can lid as a shield. V very, very backyard pro wrestling-ish. Again, 
it, it just puts a smile on my face. And, and that's all you really need. Again, it's, it's the absurd, it's the theater of it, it's the whole ant, it's the antics. And I want you to do for some English major, if they had a really good English teacher, write their thesis on how the final deletion mimics Shakespeare in, in, in some ways. I'm sure, I'm sure someone's tried it. And I'm sure it would probably be pretty interesting with the right professor. Probably not me, because I'd say, like, what the hell are you doing writing about pro wrestling in my class? Comparing to Shakespeare, how dare you? And again, it had this really fun, really fun parts that set the Hardy compound. This actually looked like Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt were, were just really enjoying themselves. I mean, sometimes even the wrestlers are going through the motion. These two actually seem like, like they enjoyed it. Um, you really had all the king kind of spots in the hardy compound, which I did not realize was so expansive. Because you had the house, the lake of resurrection, skills guard, the dilapidated boat, the village of something. Again, my only concern is that I always wonder what the live audience is doing during this, or if they have, or they have, to have, or if they have a dark match or something. Yeah, and it kind of showed the whole parts of the Hardy compound. It was, it was kind of neat. Have the, yeah, the Lake of Lake of Reincarnation. Senior PC, Senior Benjamin showed up. You had a tease of Jeff Hardy, who who was holding the world and started singing. And every so often, there were great teases about. Both wrestlers pass, especially Bray's when you saw the shed that Randy Orton burned down. Yeah, just kind of, kind of neat. Oh, but yes, the dilapidated city. Again, with Bray's, with Bray's shack was there. And I have to kind of read my notes because, again, it was a lot to take in. It was just fun. They, they look like they're having fun, and this is the flaming on. I mean, you have fireworks going off. You have Matt Hardy trying to run him over with a lawnmower. Who Bray does his upside-down crab thing and stops that, bangs his head off of it. I don't know why the ref as freaked out as, as the ref was in the first final deletion match they had in TNA between Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy. Because there the, the ref was like How's it? why am I here? This, this I just want to get this done and this is creepy. But the referee's just like, okay, this isn't this is this is this is our normal match. Let's go. The other ref just played it off better. Maybe the ref needs needs better character work, but who knows? Again, you have the land of obsolete men, which is kind of like the the Scooby Doo chase. Again, something to make you smile. So overall, it, it was it was a weak opening, but it kind of ended up at at the end. And again, it, it paves the way to WrestleMania. So, with that being said, look forward to another episode of the Hobo and his girlfriend tomorrow for the SmackDown review. Again, don't forget, WrestleMania isn't that far away. Right, Chispa? You want to go to WrestleMania. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. I'll talk to everyone later. Again, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. And I probably won't be able to get the email title up. But again, if you email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail dot one of these days, I will respond to questions as soon as you guys send me some questions. Have a good night, everyone. Too sweet. There we go. Bye.